Good evening, uh, Tony Dottino here, founder of the USA Memory Championship, president of Dottino Consulting Group, doing my Wednesday 5 p.m. hour Live with Tony broadcast. And uh, I've modified my schedule from the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Thursday, Saturday. I'm doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday, at least planning to do that through the Christmas holidays with the exception of maybe Christmas Day. Uh, what I wanted to do, uh, I've been working this week on a new uh, course that Michael Dottino is putting together to go with his Maximum Memory Mastery online. And he's taken a piece from that and he's expanded it uh, just wonderfully on brain health because we've had a lot of feedback from people asking us, what are some of the things you can teach us about how to improve our brain health? as many of the folks that are in our live workshops have been worrying about dementia and cognitive impairment and Alzheimer's and things. And in my reading of yesterday, uh, I get the, in my mailbox, I get the January issue of, I get this here for you, Healthy Aging, comes out of the uh, Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, and this is the January 2021 issue. And the article is all about how do we manage, how do we manage and protect our memory? So what do we do with how we protect memory? And as I was going through it, I felt, uh, it gave me a, a burst of confidence that the work that we're doing, that, that Michael is actually doing, uh, on the brain health course that he's now putting together for online is absolutely fantastic and spot on. So it was nice to be able to read something that's coming out of a significant uh, school of medicine and feel like you're on target with what you're promoting to people uh, for their own personal uh, education, information, and brain health. So let me go through uh, some of these and I'll share them all with you. Some that were interesting that I found that were new, I hadn't thought about before, but it does make sense, and a couple, a number of them, that were spot on with the six elements that we've been talking about for brain health. So one that we hadn't thought about, and hadn't put into our course, is mitigate hearing loss. Uh, numerous studies have linked impaired hearing to dementia, though they haven't quite come up with the reasoning for it. It may be due to the fact that impaired hearing causes people to withdraw from social engagement. And what we do know is social engagement is one of the imperatives. So if we're going to withdraw because we can't hear and participate in conversation and withdraw from that, then that's a significant issue and problem because we do know that social interaction is, uh, is an imperative. And that's critical to our overall brain health over time. Um, stop smoking. Uh, you know, it, its impact on cognition due to its harmful effect on blood vessels and increases the risk of stroke. So when we think about smoking and impacting cardio, we know that our exercising, physical exercise, and bringing oxygen into our brain, which uses about 20% of the oxygen we take in, we do know that there's a direct connection between the exercise we do and the aerobic and now anaerobic exercises as well as stretching. We know that those are important factors that help us to maintain good, strong, healthy brains over a long period of time. So smoking is, it impacts our breathing and our aerobics, certainly our lungs, uh, would be certainly something on the top of our list get treated for depression. While depression's been linked to risk for dementia and causation uh, with depressive uh, possibility resulting from uh, neurodegeneration, it is possible that both conditions may be caused by other factors. Whatever the connection, depression is a treatable disease, so if you have symptoms such as feeling, sadness, hopelessness, poor sleep, irritability and fatigue, talk to your doctor. So here we go, we now pick up sleep, and then we know that sleep is a problem. And God, how many people, especially during this time of pandemic, are having challenges and problems with sleep? And I've done a number of Live with Tonys that really have talked about uh, 
how can people deal with their sleep issues and what can they do in terms of their habits, in terms of what they do before bedtime, what they can do in terms of changing their synergy of thinking, what do they do if they get up in the middle of the night and they're just they're racing thoughts and they're just working on something that's really troubling them and it's causing them a level of stress. And, and what I always recommend to people, and we, don't, we just lay in bed and we toss and turn, toss and turn, but our brain is, is, uh, our brain is working on trying to deal with that is and try to solution it and try to uh, come up with answers. And then it wants to keep repeating it so you don't forget it when we wake up, right? So what do we do? We stay awake. So what I tell people to do is get out of bed. You know, you're trying to get to bed, you're trying to go to sleep, and I'm telling you to get out of bed. Yeah, and get a piece of paper and then write down everything your brain is going through, every thought that it has, and document it so that your brain knows that you've captured it. It's now on a piece of paper of some sort, and your brain will say, okay, as long as I know where that piece of paper is, I can capture and can get those thoughts, and they're not lost because I'm going back to sleep. And what we do know is there are different levels of sleep that we go through where you may be at a peak form of creativity that may drop down as you begin to wake up and therefore you're not at peak anymore and you may lose some of those thoughts that you think, gee, I solved the world's problems during my sleep but when I woke up I forgot what half of those were. So what you wanna do is maintain the documentation of your solution. So the third thing is get pre depression and it talks about what that does to your sleep. Uh, number four, don't get yourself socially isolated. And I think every science uh, institute in the country, every neuroscience group in the country is coming back with the negative impacts of isolation, especially with the pandemic going on right now. This is becoming a huge problem, especially for people in assisted living, especially for people who live alone. How do we avoid getting people into a state where they feel totally isolated and disconnected? What we do know is we're hardwired to be social beings, and therefore, how do we maintain social interaction and social connection that takes us from isolation and then we can now kick the ball back and forth over the net uh, that may also add to loneliness, and we've seen a whole lot on that. But numerous studies have suggested that staying socially active reduces the risk of dementia, though as with depression, the direction is not always clear. Cognitive impairment may cause people to socialize less than other way around. So as a productive effect, it may come down to the fact that social contract requires that you exercise cognitive skills like memory. Social engagement correlates with physical activity and if you combine the two, uh, and going to classes, going to aerobics, so how do you exercise in a way where you're also combining uh, being socially uh, engaged with other people. So find a walking buddy or somebody that walks six feet apart during the COVID, but uh, certainly no reason for you to be isolated, especially if you're exercising and you get on a bike and bike with someone, you go to the gym, exercise next to someone and make a new friend. Next, number five, I love this one, it's stimulate your intellect. I, we call this mental challenges, which is why I am so excited we've got such great feedback from the Maximum Memory Mastery online course because it's teaching people mnemonic skills that help them improve their memories. They're learning new things, which then eventually, uh, Michael is gonna be working on a course on how to improve your learning to learn and absorb bunches of information that you need for professional accreditation or for school or for whatever uh, policies and things you're trying to remember but it stimulate your intellect. So mental challenges are vital, a critical element in the brain health course that Michael is working on. Stay physically active, I've already discussed that with you, and the importance of oxygen, and even staying active in your home if you're in an apartment, uh, getting even up and down. They, they talk about just getting up and down from a chair 10 times. Just moving your leg muscles and keeping your legs moving, and don't just, get in sedentary positions and just sit there and then get up and oh, you're creep. just getting up. Uh, I always tell people, get a phone book, get, get some, uh, any kind of books, put two or three of them on a stack and just walk up and down the phone book, staying physically active. 
if you've got a half gallon jug of water or you've got milk or any kind of uh, liquid in the house, you know, just do some curls. And maybe you lift them up. So do some exercises. Stay physically active. Uh, breathe clean air. I, I think this goes without saying. A study showed that older adults living in areas where pollution was higher than 40% of pollution was high, 40% uh, at a greater risk of being diagnosed with dementia. So when we think about the particles of air pollution pass into the brain through your bloodstream, which is the, the source of why exercise is so important. So breathing clean air and then maintaining normal blood sugar levels. And so we hear a lot about blood sugar and diabetes and what that does to our bodies and our physical natures and things of that sort. Uh, so we talk about, in our brain health series, we talk about our nutrition. What are we eating? How's that impacting our whole body systems? And how does it get used up in our brain? We talk about exercise. We talk about sleep. We talk about stress and emotional uh, responses, as in we hear uh, the Mount Sinai depression. Uh, so we've got the elements all packaged in a really neat uh, program that's being put together that I really think is going to be cutting edge and getting to people things that if they desire to improve their brain health will give them a roadmap on how to do that. And that's an important element for all of us because I don't think any of us want to lose our mental capacities no matter what age and surveys have shown that to be a factor over and over again. So this is the uh, end of, uh, and by the way, I always say to people, send me an email if there's something I've covered or touched on that you'd want to explore or expand in some fashion. And uh, that's at A-D-O-T-T-I-N-O -T -T at AOL.com. That's A-D-O-T-T-I-N-O -T -T at AOL.com. And our goal continues to be how do we all stay well and be smart and uh, keep our brains healthy at the same time. We know things now that can set us back during COVID quarantines and isolations. So we have to be much more proactive in making sure we avoid what those are. And today's broadcast is some of those elements that you can just pick and choose, couple, focus on those, and make something positive happen to your life. All right, so back on Friday night in the five o'clock hour. Have a good Thursday and uh, stay warm. As you can see, I'm here in Orlando, Florida, where We've dipped into the 50s, and for me, I've gotten spoiled to 70s and 80s, and it's been cold. <laughs>